Today's lesson is, uh, oh, thank you, you are the man, the man, all right. So today's, today's lesson, and it is a teaching, I'm, I know it's a time for preaching, but really it's a, this is going to be a teaching as much as anything, though you can shout if you like, or you can say amen, I'll require you to say it every now and then, yeah, you know, agree with me as I go through the word, but really it is a moment where you need to reflect. The title of the sermon is, Everything Means Everything. Everything means everything. And God is serious. When he says, I want everything, he means everything. And it's an interesting concept because God holds the same standard to himself that he requires from us. God gave everything. Everything. So when he asks for everything, and everything doesn't have to be the word everything, because it could be all, okay, all-encompassing. There should be nothing left over, right? Because if something's left over, you know what God's going to do with leftovers? Dross is called in the Bible. He burns it up. Yes. So give it all. Give it all. Yes. Now, pastor, been preaching long enough to know, teaching long, that when the room is silent, they're really see, they're speaking to you. <laughs> like, you already meddling. <laughs> You're already in our business. I ain't gonna say a word. Hallelujah. What does he mean? Everything. This is not trying to get your money. Okay. No, it's not that kind of preaching. It's not a manipulation. It's because it's a kingdom principle. Amen. God wants everything. So um, we're gonna start out with. And I best why I got my phone. Because I forgot. I'm all over the place. Uh, what's the first scripture I have there? Is it Matthew? 13 or 15? 13. You the man. Because that's what I got. Okay, go to Matthew 13. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let us, I'll read you a follow because we might have different translations. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, that which when a man hath found, he hid it, he hideth, excuse me, and for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. Interesting. Um, there's so much to be gained from this one parable. It is loaded with goodies, and I'm going to parcel out a few of them. But what's really important, if you can go with me, and again, these are, these are I didn't give you all the scriptures because there's some things that are being downloaded, right? So that you understand why this is important. It starts out with, again, the kingdom of heaven. And we need to understand that the church is the body of Christ, but the work to be done by the church is in the kingdom. And the kingdom is first in you, Luke 17, 21. Do not look for the work out here. The kingdom of heaven is not to be observed. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And so the work, anytime there's kingdom work, first look inside of yourself, not out here, not the church. It's what's going on in me. And so when, again, the kingdom of heaven is like, this is work that's going to take place in you, which is why I will be so focused in your business, though it's not personal, because the kingdom of heaven is all about you. Amen? The kingdoms, the kingdoms, all of them shall become the kingdom of our God. All of these kingdoms belong to God. All of them. Amen. And so keep this personal. When you're hearing this message, it's really about what is going on with me. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent taketh the kingdom by force. That's Matthew uh, chapter 10 or 11. So he's talking about, is there, is there a war in you? Yeah, Paul tells us that. There's a war in me. There's a struggle in me. And sometimes we don't want to hear that because I'm saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. My life is supposed to be cool and easy and 
without trouble and yeah, placid and all those cool words. But Jesus says, no, let me help you. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be a lot of it. But you have overcome the world. Why? Because I have overcome the world. And this kingdom is not a kingdom that's established for you to be a loser. You are not a loser. You have won the greatest victory because the kingdom of God is in you and you won't lose that kingdom. Hallelujah. Yes. I didn't give you the kingdom so we can fool around. Yes, and that's why Revelation says you're a king and priest. Like change your thinking about who you are. Wow. So, again, the kingdom of heaven is like Unto treasure hid in the field. Let's make this personal. The kingdom of heaven in you is like a treasure that's in you. Huh. Let me pause here for a message that's not quite in this parable, but is for new beginnings. Kingdom principle. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Now that sounds fairly simple. Keep breathing. But it will make sense in a second. I learned this from a personal trainer. And then God spoke to me and said, and that is a kingdom principle. So when you're lifting weights and you get to a place where it gets a little heavy, heavier than you're accustomed to pushing, sometimes you know what you do? You stop breathing. And that's not the way to lift weight, right? You have to keep breathing, breathe through it. God said the breathing is keep praising because the kingdom of God works in praise. And sometimes when we face adversity, you know what we stop doing? We stop praising God. We stop coming to church. Keep praising God. Praise through it. There's no reason. I, I, it's, it's like really bad and it hurts all. Keep praising. No matter what's going on, the, 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 your eyes will deceive you. The kingdom of heaven is in here, not out here. This stuff doesn't change what's in here. doesn't change who's in here. We're supposed to change the atmosphere because the kingdom of God is in us. We are to change the atmosphere. Oh, my God, I feel something happening already. My shoes come off, we'll be in trouble. <laughs> I almost kicked it off right there. My God. Is this making sense so far? Keep breathing. Because if you're not praising, if you stop breathing, what happens if you stop breathing too long? <laughs> you die. Right. Think about your life without praise. What would life be like if I could not praise God? You would explode. <laughs> yeah, the goodness of God in you, you would, you would explode. But think about our country where we never even think of it. We don't even hesitate. In this America, we can praise God with religious freedom. Whew. Never think about if I, ooh, raising your hand might, it might cost me my life. Would you raise your hand if it would cost you your life? Because we never think about it. We just do it. But there are some places this could cost you your life. Saying his name could cost you your life. Yes. Hallelujah. So we get to choose if we want to praise God. And, and that should be a constant. Keep breathing. Amen. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a treasure hidden in the field. A man find it. Huh. He hideth. Wow. He hideth. That's an interesting, this whole, this whole one scripture drives me crazy because there's a lot of things that does, they don't make sense to me. Like you find a treasure and you hide it. And then the joy therefore goeth and sell all that he hath and buyeth the field. And I'm waiting for the next scripture and this parable is over. <laughs> like what happened after he, he bought it? Like there should be more to this parable. Like, God, what is it? And so I ask a lot of questions, and here are some of the answers. To put this culturally, whether it's now or then, but I'm back in that time, if you bought land, whatever was in the land is yours. Whatever's in the land is yours. 
So I want to make this first spiritual. The world, this earth is God's. And the fullness thereof. Yeah, the earth and everything that's in it. Now, I said this in the, in the morning service. Let me be so clear. Everything. Including Satan. Including Satan. Everything is his. And so sometimes we worry about something that God has control of. Woo! No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But why? That's the real question. We say that. That's verse 17 of Isaiah 54. But Isaiah 54, 13 tells us why. He says there's an enemy in this earth. There is. But recognize that the smith who's making the weapon, I made the smith who's making the weapon. Yeah, <laughs> I've made, I've made, and the smith is the adversary, translated. I've made the adversary who's making the weapon against you. And you're worried about the adversary who's making a weapon against you when I made the adversary. And you don't think I can dust him anytime I want to. You're crazy. <laughs> I dust him anytime I want to. If you haven't read the Bible, the devil doesn't anything without my permission. Have you noticed that? He does nothing without my permission. So if he's in your life, he's in your life because I want him to be there. Ask Paul. Take this thorn away. No, I'm not. Not going to do it. Why? Because Satan is being used to keep you in check because you might get puffed up. And so I'm going to keep Satan there to keep you in check. I can't do that by myself. Obviously not. <laughs> Obviously not. So I'm going to keep him there. And by the way, if you think about it, and I'm keeping Satan in your life. Principalities are just residential demons. That's why it's important to know kingdom. Because God does not, can't do it, there it is. He doesn't destroy demons. Have you ever noticed that? He says, your job is to manage them. Even when this is all over and the kingdom is established on earth, he says, hell, demons, everybody in hell is going to be pushed into the lake of fire where they shall exist forever, not destroyed they're, they're going to be in a place forever, and they're going to feel pain. God, why don't you just dust them? Because the kingdom principle is what I create is forever. It's not destroyed. It's not going to be destroyed. Everybody is going to live in eternity. It's just where we're going to live, heaven or hell, because anything made by God is eternal. God's not going to destroy it. Amen? So it's important to understand kingdom principles. And recognize if you would, again, I don't, I don't know if you have the ability or if you have a device, please go there with me. It's not in the scriptures I gave earlier. Again, this is stuff just kind of flowing, stuff that I've already taught. How quickly Jesus Christ helps us to understand how important kingdom is. Jesus' first message. Now, I'm at Matthew 16, but I'm going to go first to Matthew 4. First message, repent. He did not say the church. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And now we get to, it says kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And every parable is the kingdom, 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 kingdom. Always talking about the kingdom. And then he says to Peter, who do men say that I am? And this is verse 18. Excuse me, um, 17. Jesus asked uh, Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed the answer to you, but my Father is in heaven, my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, listen closely to this switch, it's so cool, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus comes back to resurrect Jesus in Acts 1. You know what he's talking about? Acts 1, he's talking about the kingdom again. It's not that the church is not important. But this whole journey that we're on is about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's really about who is the king, the true king. 
And if you think about it in Isaiah, what was the, the whole issue with Satan? Excuse me, Lucifer was created and there was nothing evil in him, the Bible says. He was pure until iniquity was found in his heart. And what was the issue? I want to be like God. I want to be the ruler of this kingdom. He comes back to Jesus and he says, Jesus, see all these kingdoms up on a mountain? If you worship me, I will give you all of these kingdoms. Over and over and over again, we hear this concept of kingdom. And you need to be aware of that, that this kingdom issue is real. And one of the things I challenge in Bible study is when you get to the New Testament church, you know what you don't find anymore? It's kind of interesting. Language changes from Acts forward. Jesus is no longer referred to as the shepherd. And we're no longer referred to as sheep. Isn't that interesting? Check me out. We had Art, didn't we have some people checking me out? Like, no, check it out. I want you to check it out. And if you find it, let me know. So I'll change the narrative. But I checked it out. And there is reference. You will, see, you will read a reference from Old Testament, this conversation, about Jesus being the good shepherd. But forward, after the resurrected Jesus plants himself, it's kingdom stuff, and he calls us ambassadors and saints and kings. Language changes. Put on the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. We're no longer dumb sheep. We have to be, the Bible says, be not ignorant of his devices. Know your enemy and know that he's defeated. If you know what to do in that moment, you will not ever be afraid of the enemy again. You're not a sheep. Not a sheep. Woo! Now, some of you went, what about there's a devil seeking whom he may devour? He's like a roaring lion, right? Mm, I'm glad that you, you sent that vibe to me, right? Sent that vibe to me so I can help you with that. Because if you keep reading before you get to that scripture, it says things like a kingdom principle like humble yourself because God, the king, resists the proud. Wow. He resists, if you're proud, he's resisting you, which is crazy. Until you think like a parent, you resist your children sometimes because they're like a little goofy. Okay, that's not how we do that here. Not how it's work. Yeah. Humble yourself, resist the devil. Because he is like, who is he like? Say it again. Somebody say it loud. Yeah, because he's still trying to be like the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> My God, still trying to imitate. And it's about the kingdom. Who, who is this king of glory? We're talking about this today. That song had me right there like, oh, no, it's Jesus Christ. And so let's get into this. I'm, I'm way off. That's all right. Okay, because I said, I, I said, I got this thing that says, stay on topic. <laughs> um, so what does God mean in this parable? What does Jesus mean? He selleth all that he hath, and that's really what I want to get to. There's something important in the ground, something really important, that he's willing to sell everything. Now, it doesn't tell us what the treasure is. It just says when he discovers there's treasure, he selleth everything. So whatever's in the ground must be really, really important that he would sell everything. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. So in order to get this treasure that's in the earth, God said, there is treasure in this earth. I created status of man changed. He's in earth. So I got to sell everything everything. So Jesus becomes our 
ransom. So get the right language. I'm going to sell everything for the opportunity to get you back. That's why this story doesn't end. That's one of the reasons. The field, because I'm not sure. You have free will. I have the field. The earth is mine. But I'm not sure if you're going to choose me. But guess what? This earth is mine. And I've given you a way to accept eternal life. But I'm not going to make you do it. You have to choose me. But you were worth the opportunity to just go get the whole earth. So Jesus says, I'm going to die for the whole world. With no guarantees. Just willing to, to dump it all, to give it all. That you might have the opportunity to choose Jesus. You read this closely. For the joy that goeth, that goeth and he selleth all. For the joy set before Jesus, he endured the cross. Recognizing this is the will of the Father. I love this working through me, the will of the Father, working through me so that I can reach out and touch you. One touch changes everything. One touch changes everything. And I just want an opportunity to touch you. So, so we, change, we, we, we change the narrative. It's not you. You're in the ground. You're in the earth. Recognize. I love this. Recognize this. Look at your neighbor now. It's one of them neighbor things. It is not about you. It is not about you. It really isn't. You're the treasure. You're just hidden. Jesus does it all. He, he, buy, he ransoms us. Then he gives us opportunity. Now from the parable. Let's learn a few things. Why did Jesus do that? Well, one, God loves us and he wants to keep us. So let's get that straight. That's the whole world, right? But now you're saved. Mm. You're saved. I told you it's going to be about you. So it started out, it wasn't about you, but it kind of was about you. But it really about him saving you. But once you became saved, it became about you. It really is about you now because in you dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. In you is a treasure. What are you going to do with the treasure? Whew. Look at the person you love the most, which means don't look away from the one. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> like, look the right way. Ask the question, and I'm going to do it slowly. What difference does the difference make if the difference doesn't make a difference? What difference does the difference make if the difference doesn't make a difference? Now, let me, four times I use the word difference. What difference does having the Holy Ghost make? If the Holy Ghost doesn't make a difference. Woo! <laughs> what difference does having the gift of God in you, if the gift of God's in you, don't make a difference? See, this becomes, it's really about you now. To, to be chosen by God, because we are the chosen, the elect. To have the indwelling of the Godhead in me and not make a difference. Why? Why would I have this incredible power and authority and might and honor and glory in me and not do anything with it. My job is to expand the kingdom. How do I do that? By testifying to the Lord. And he's endured me with the power to do what? To be a witness to concentrically home, community, nation, world. I'm to make a difference. You can follow the scripture, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't, I'm winging it now. <laughs> yes, because it's flowing. In, um, in Luke 18, there was a, a scribe. 
So Jesus, what must I do? Which was the wrong question. What must I do to inherit? He was thinking about Old Testament stuff. What must I do? Something I got to do to inherit the kingdom. Salvation. Jesus says, why are you calling me good? There's none good but the Father. Keep the commandments. You know what to do. Jesus is checking him. You know what to do. He said, yeah, I've done all those things from my youth. Jesus, who knows us intimately, looks right into his heart and he says, yeah, that's good. You did not, one time did he say that statement was incorrect. He says, but I got to get to the real issue. This is one thing. This is one thing I want you to do. You're a rich man. So sell everything. Sell everything. Give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. The Bible says that he went away weeping, sorrowful. Why? Because everything does mean everything. Now, here's the crazy thing about a kingdom principle. And it is slightly a manipulation, but not in a negative sense. It is something that God wants you to understand. Giving to God, when you give to God, you lose nothing. When you give to God, you lose nothing. Listen to the, look, read the scripture up. He says, if you sell everything, you will have treasure. When you give, you will get. When you give, you will get. What is this treasure? I'm not going to tell you. But if it's in heaven, it's good. It's from God, it's good. Ah, it's by faith. Ah, nah. And, and, and then, and, and then the, well, he says, he walks away so from the disciples get all crazy. Like, who can do that, Lord? And, you know, we're doomed. And, and um, oh, this is not going to work. I was really hard and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus helps him. He tells Peter, like, the outspoken Peter says, we've given all. We've given everything, Lord. And Jesus said, let me help you with that. Anybody who gives up anything for the kingdom of God will reap in this world 100-fold, in this life and the life to come. You will never, ever lose giving to the kingdom of God in this world. Never. It is a kingdom principle. God says, when I want everything, you give them everything because you will get everything back. If you want to find your life, what does the Bible say? Lose it. Lose your life. You want to find your life? Lose it. It is so counterintuitive because that's how the kingdom works. I use foolish things to confound the wise. So when I ask you for your stuff, what you going to say? I got like three responses. <laughs> I thought for sure it was going to be, yeah, Lord, take it all. Take it all. Take it all. <laughs> take it all. No. Because this, this is a really existential question. And God will find you because the devil will find you. The devil knows what you like. He doesn't sleep or slumber. just like, God, these are spirits. They're not cheating. Like, take a nap and wake up and Matt will still be there. I'm watching Matt every day. When Matt has forgotten all about me, I'm watching him every day. I know what he likes. For me, it would be Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Cherry Dr. Pepper. There's one in my car right now. <laughs> huh? It is good. <laughs> There's my partner. <laughs> it is a temptation that is hard to, to struggle. I struggle with it. Trust me. So the enemy works in my congregation sometimes. Because I said I wasn't going to drink Dr. Pepper anymore. You know what happened? Dr. Pepper started showing up. <laughs> And they were laughing, bringing them to me, like, Pastor, hey. Just, 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 just like, where's your God now? <laughs> Strike them down, Lord, with fire. <laughs> God knows you better than anyone, and the devil, your enemy, observes you all the time. And he is going to strike at your weakness. But here's the crazy thing. That's why you have to give everything to God. Give everything to God because he says, in your weakness, my strength is perfected. Right. Right. 
Now the question is, do you trust God with those words? Do you trust him to give him everything? Let me be clear. To give him your children. To give him your wife. To give him your husband. To give him your disease. To give him your illness. To give him your problem. To give him all of it. I want everything. God is a God all about everything. Until there is only faith. I don't want anything else. Until faith is all that you have. I don't want anything else. Because the kingdom of God works by faith. Circumcision and uncircumcision avails nothing. It is faith which worketh by love. And I want, that's what I want. So get rid of all the other stuff. No flesh can glory in my presence. Nothing but faith. And your faith is not even yours. Have you noticed that? Your faith is his faith that he's given to you, that you're giving back to him. I want it all. And I keep looking at this, this sign right there. I mean, you, you can't miss it. And I think you guys are on purpose. He makes how? By getting rid of all the old stuff. Yes, I don't want all that old crap. <laughs> I'm dusting all that, and I'm giving you new stuff. Whew, God is good. He's good all the time. If we go, my battery is dead. Oh, my, my phone is dying. What's the next scripture? After, after Luke, there, there is, oh, it's uh, Philippians, my favorite. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Chapter 3. Um, can you, I'm, I'm going to just read from here. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in his flesh more, I more, circumcised the eighth day. This is the resume of Paul. The stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, of Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, blameless, I, I do it all, I'm good, keep going, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous which is in the law, blameless. Paul is saying, any, check, tick, 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 tick. I've done it all. But what things were gained to me, I count them loss. All of them. All of that stuff. My resume doesn't mean anything in the presence of God for the loss of Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the what? Excellency of the, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of how many things? All things. And do count them but dung that I may win Christ. And in a different scripture, he says, and that's why I become all things to all men, that I might win some to Christ. There is nothing that I have that I won't get rid of. There's some people playing golf right now. If God said, Sell your clubs. <laughs> I'm keeping the nine iron, Lord. <laughs> Get rid of some of them. Sell the boat. Don't go to the game. I get an amen at all on that one. <laughs> Don't go to the game. Don't go to the game. Season tickets, sell them all. In fact, give them away. Bless somebody. God knows where we live. He knows where we live. He will ask us for those things. But remember, we go, uh, we don't lose anything when we give it. We don't lose anything to give it to the kingdom. We never lose. And that is, that's a principle that we have to get. Giving is better than receiving. I think somewhere in the Bible it says that. It is better to give than receive. My God. But here is landing. Everybody put your seatbelts on. We're coming in for a landing. Trays up. All right. Yeah, well, I haven't flown a long time. I know something like that. I'm going to Chicago. I'm driving. <laughs> I'm afraid to fly. <laughs> Take too long. All this craziness. Um, Second Corinthians. Huh. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Stop right there. 
if you read this cross-reference, this scripture here will take you back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. That light that he's talking about. Because the light, let there be light, let light be, is Jesus Christ. Amen? And that is who dwells in you. Now, is Jesus truly the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. No, are you sure? Yes. You sh oh, I like you. I mean, Dr. Pepper, Cherry, and, I mean, we're connecting in a way no one else can relate to. Be careful. <laughs> I found my sister. I'm going to say that one more time, though. Are you sure? I mean, Pastor Paul, this is a trick question. They should know it by now. It's a trick. <laughs> Are you sure Jesus is the same? Okay. Then how many miracles has he done through you? I just want to be clear. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, how many folks have been raised in your presence? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same power, walked this earth, he did a whole bunch of stuff. And he did those things not to show off. All the miracles were designed to show that you know I'm God and I have the power to do what I'm saying. So get up and walk or whatever he did, open your eyes. I want you to know, the unbeliever, I want you to know that who is in me is real. And therefore, whew, blind eyes open. Now, could it be? Don't feel bad. This, is not, this was not to shame you. It's not to shame you. It's could it be that I haven't given him all things? And so before God does a miracle through me for somebody else, he's still trying to work out a miracle in me. Could it be? Amen, Pastor. That's exactly it. He's still working on me. I'm still being perfected. Oh, yes, absolutely. He's still trying to work some stuff out in me. But I know that there was these disciples that were flawed. And Jesus said to them, the 12 of you go and then the 7 of you go. And guess what? I'm going to give you power. And you will be able to do some things. And then in Mark chapter 16, it says, signs, miracles, and wonders shall follow those who believe. It's all through the scripture. So the body of Christ, the kingdom is working and working in me. Why are we not seeing a lot of those things happening? Could it be he's still working on you. Hmm. Because your faith has to be working. Faith without works, works, works. So am I willing? Am I willing to sacrifice everything like Paul for this thing called the kingdom of God? Let's keep reading. Next scripture. But we have this treasure back to the parable, but now it's not a parable, it's real. In these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God may be of God and not S. Keep going. We are troubled on every side, and we keep breathing. <laughs> we are perplexed, but we ain't crying. Keep going. Persecuted, but we don't say, God, you've left me. Cast down, but not destroyed. Oh, I'm going to get up and try it again. Oh, I'm going to get up and I'm going to try it again. Oh, I'm going to get up and try it again. Keep going. Always abounding in the body, the dying of the Lord, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. Where? In my body. In me. In my body. His dying reflected in me. Keep going. For we which have lived are, wait a minute. For we, just want to make sure they've seen it like I'm, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus, always delivered. But if you give your life, that the life of all, also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. Give your life to get life. Give your life to give, get life. Give your life. To get life. You're saved wise. Now you're an instrument, a member of the body of Christ to do what? That I can go out and win people to Christ. And how am I going to do that? Sacrificing myself. And God wants all of you. 
All of you. All of you. But, but coach now, not pastor, but coach Matt knows this too. Because you know what he demands from his wrestlers? All of I want your best effort every day. I want your best effort. All of you doesn't mean all of you the same amount. It's not the same amount. It's a recognition. This is all I have today, Lord. But I'm going to give it all to you. And so I might pray six hours one day and six minutes tomorrow, and it's both all of me. Because God is not interested into the quantity in terms of it's got to be six hours or six weeks or 40 days of fasting or whatever. It's your heart. He's after your heart, and I want all of your heart, all of it. Wow. I know. And then he points back to himself, Pastor. Paul, you know what he says? You were made in my image and my likeness. We're landing. Touchdown. No, that's the wrong way. It's... We're on the track because touchdown make us think about football. <laughs> there was a song that you were singing that I was singing. Old school. I love it. Something about glory. Be glorified. Be glorified. And then it's and then the be glorified in the heavens. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified in his. <laughs> be glorified. Well, that, I think that's the prayer. That your will be done as it is in heaven, in this earth, in this temple. Be glorified. And the word glorified talks about it's a weight. Glory is a weight. Whew. And we have this cloud of witnesses that are watching us, that are encouraging us, that are cheering for us to carry that weight. Let me help you as you stand to your feet. That's a smooth way of saying stand to your feet. <laughs> and I didn't say I wanted all of you to stand because this is an, everything means everything, all of us, because you're part of the body. You need to understand this. The body is to advance the kingdom. This is not to shame you or anything like that. It's, 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 it's truly how the body works, and the body is an illustration of how the kingdom works and all that stuff. If you drop a bowling ball on Pastor Matt's foot, <laughs> what's going to happen? He's going to do what? <laughs> They know you. His foot is going to hurt. The rest of his body will respond to his foot. The rest of the body will respond to the pain in his foot. And his body will not function as effectively as it could because of the pain in his foot. Which member of the body are you? And are you helping or taking away from the kingdom? I don't mind people praying, ask my pastor, will you pray for me? And I pray for you all the time. It would be nice sometimes to pastor, can I pray for you? <laughs> it would be nice because we're sharing. And by the way, you know that your immune system goes to where it's needed the most. If you get sick in one part of your body, there's some kind of invasion. Send all the troops right there, let's go. Which makes you susceptible to other illnesses because we're trying to work in one specific area. That's our kingdom principle. Not God. God is never weak. But the kingdom, we do need one another. I need you. You need me. Absolutely. We need each other to support. The Bible says to strengthen one another, supplying strength to those joints. Okay? And so why do I have you standing? Because you're committed. You're already saved. Who's not saved? Let me just do that. Anybody not accept Christ? There we go. Okay, so we're all in the kingdom, all in the kingdom, to do what? Let's start with each other. How about that? Before we run out and save the world, okay? 
why don't we do something that might be a little difficult? We don't find out right here, right now. My brother, uh, what's your name, sir? Hmm? Jordan. You're going to do it with me. Okay, you, you, you help me. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> I want you to just, just think about it first. I want you to look across the sanctuary. It's you and me, Jordan, so you don't have to look. You got me. But everyone else, look across the sanctuary. You're going to find someone. When you look, you're going to find somebody. And you know what? You know how you, you know how you, know you found them? Because when you see them, you're going to look away. That's the person. You, you got your eyes connected. And went, oh, too intimate for me. And you looked away immediately. You know who that person was. You found them. They found you. You found each other. So I want you to go to that person who you looked at. And, I want you to go to him. Come here, Jordan. You got to come on up. Jordan's like, oh, man. No, this side of that side, you got to go find the person. Make you guys do a little work. Yeah. What's up, my man? All right, stay right here. All right. Ooh. Yes. We're almost there. Pastor Paul is moving, he's moving, he's grooving. Shake it up, Pastor Paul. I'm going to do something that's really simple, really simple. Jordan and I are going to practice. I'm going to go first. Jordan's going to be done hard, bro. <laughs> I love you with the love of Christ. Amen. It is that simple. Tell the person, I love you, and listen, I love you with the love of Christ. Oh, we're done. Thank you. Now, you can say right where you are, because I'm going I'm to I'm be done here and sit down. Here, here's what's important. You thought that was the, today's lesson. No, that was practice. That's practice. Now that you know you can do it, because you just demonstrated it. I want you to go to Walmart or Wegmans or somebody, and when a person, like, right, oh, hi. <laughs> I love you with the love of Christ. The person won't know what to do. They'll be, like, freaking out, right? Yeah, they're going to freak out. But you'll do it, and I guarantee you, if you keep doing it, the treasure that's in you will take over. And you will be a vessel for the kingdom of God. You will be. I guarantee it. If you, if you keep doing it, you will become a vessel that will be used by God. A simple phrase that you can say all day, every day. The excellency of the power that is in me is God's love. That's how I was saved. And I love you with the love of Christ who saved me. And somewhere that'll come, and I'll start coming out. And the same love that he saved, he can save you. But you got to practice just something simple, a few words. I love you with the love of Christ. The rest will start to flow out of you. But you got to practice it. And so, Father God, I pray, as you've just helped us, Lord, demonstrate the love that is in us, the love that saved us is now flowing through me from my lips to the heart, to the ears and the heart of every person you're going to direct me to so that I would be an instrument in your hands to deliver the love of God, the love of Christ, excuse me, your love through Christ to empty vessels that can be filled with the Godhead mightily and that they too could join us in this heavenly journey just by saying, the kingdom of God works by love. You are love, and I thank you, God, that this whole today's message was designed to help us understand, for you so loved the world that you gave your son that whosoever believeth in you shall not perish but have everlasting life, and that I could give that so freely just by dying to myself and giving you to someone else. Such a simple thing to do. But give me courage, Lord, because sometimes the simple is hard to do. 
So give me courage. Give me a boldness in the Holy Spirit. Something that I am not comfortable with, but I will become more comfortable every day. Remind me of this sermon as I go wherever I go. When I see someone on an elevator walking the street, someone who's lonely, depressed, forlorn, whatever, that you remind me, I have the ability and the power to say, God loves you, I love you through Jesus Christ. I thank you that that simple thing, God, we give you glory for souls that will be saved from this simple lesson, how you would transform uh, communities and families. Wow, an amazing thing just by sharing your love. I give you honor and glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.